What's up guys? Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. Today we're going to review iFlight's new Cinebe 75mm little 2 to 3S Cinewoop. Very, very cool top mount battery configuration or bottom mount if you want it. Has a bunch of options on here. We're going to talk about what the right battery is to fly on this one. We're going to talk about flight times, pros and cons. We're going to do line of sight flight tests for you. And we're also going to do some FPV and I'm going to show you the DVR footage from this Cadex Turtle V2 on here and I'm going to show you that DVR footage from the bottom here. I have it exposed so you can see it. That's the Cadex Turtle V2 with the micro SD card slot there recording 60 frames per second which is really really cool but not only does this quad look really neat everyone likes the way this one looks with the stickers on the outside it looks really neat with the Cinebe on the outside great name for it but it also flies extremely well and we're going to talk about the best prop and battery combo to get that butter smooth video that you guys are looking for with this and uh, we're going to talk about conditions to fly it in you can fly it indoors or outdoors either way you're going to get some super smooth video maybe even smoother than the beta fpv 85x dare i say that i know a lot of you guys are wondering which one should i get the 85x or should i get the cinebe well you can decide after you see the video footage in this video. I did test it on a variety of batteries and also a variety of different props. They are 40 millimeter props, very standard out there. It's the same size as what the Mobile uses. It's a 1.5 millimeter shaft running on top of 1103 motors. And we'll go through all those specs for you coming up. Uh, but speaking of coming up and giveaways this one is coming up for giveaway the mobile 7 hd is coming to a lucky patreon's doorstep i'm going to send this out to somebody by the end of this week so get ready for that stay tuned on the channel and i will announce in an upcoming video the winner of this one but if you'd like to win the cinebe by all means please become a patreon on the channel because if you do you get signed up not only to access to talk to me behind the scenes you can also talk to the other guys in the community on the discord chat we have a private server that you can log into. It actually has text, video, and voice chat in there. It's really, really neat. So you can check out the link down below, and it says, "Become, be my friend. Be my friend, why don't you? Um, so let's go ahead outside. Let's do some line of sight flying with it. We'll do some FPV. I'll show you the DVR and the onboard footage from the Cadex Turtle V2. Here we go. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and do a line of sight flight test so you can see what it looks like flying with a 3S battery. That's what we're starting out with here. We're also going to test it on 2 and 3S and different prop configurations. I'm going to show you that video. We're also going to compare both of the two side by side with those different props that are included in the box. But I feel like the, the snap and roll rate is actually pretty good on here. On 3S, it looks pretty promising. So I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be a lot of fun to fly. The power to rate ratio. When you add a Cadex Turtle V2 on board, a Whoop, it adds quite a bit of extra weight. That board is pretty big, and it does add a lot of weight to it. We have a glass lens now on this upgraded version and a microphone in the mix compared to the V1. So uh, in conjunction with the ND filter and all that jazz on there, it's going to make some really nice video, and it should clear up a lot of the jello. So let's go ahead and do some testing with it. We'll get up first on a 2S battery and the Gym Fan 1636 props. I got lucky there was a train going by. So I got to show you a little bit of kind of medium height here. I'll go up a little bit higher later so you can really see that jello at the edge of the screen. And this is where you see the jello. Look at the edges of the screen, left and right. Look for that jello. That's where you get the horizontal vibrations. You can really see it when you get up high. If you watch a review and they're down close to the ground, you don't see it as much. So if someone's flying it really low, most of the review, you're just not going to see a whole lot of jello unless it's really aggressive. And with this quad, it's not. So that's really impressing me right now. I, I'm I'm feeling like this has less jello than the 85X. And I absolutely adore the 85X. I thought it was really, really great. You see that vibration on the left-hand side of the screen right there that I'm talking about? It's in there on the 1636 props. And see, when I get close to the ground, these guys are doing jiu-jitsu or something here, practicing how to uh, beat me up if they could find me. But I can't because I'm way on the other side of the field. The XM Plus goes maybe two to three football fields out. And I can slow it down a lot. I reduce my camera angle, and I just kind of whoop around the park 
with all of that full range receiver goodness and the 200 milliwatt even on 25 milliwatt gets me out there a couple football fields away and I could really slow this down even so slow as to make this gap between my legs and back up in the air looking pretty good not bad not bad at all so let's go ahead and let's do a comparison between the two let me split screen here gym fan on the right HQ on the left and look at the edge of the screen I moved the gym fan 1636 over so you can see that left hand side of the screen see that jitter compare it to the HQ on the other side on the left hand side of the screen both of those have major differences the gym fan does show just a little more vibration on the edge of the screen but man the HQ 40 millimeter props look great way less jello again I can pull things off like this because I lowered the camera angle to fly a little bit slower still flying 2s here on the HQ props let's switch over now to some 3s action and I still have a low camera angle so I'm able to pull off really tight gaps I normally don't fly brushless quadcopters underneath park benches and this low and slow to the ground but with this quad that's what's really fun about this quad and the prop guards actually do work see that vibration there that came in after I hit something that's the prop wash and the flight controller freaking out a little bit and I almost completely wiped out but I got lucky sometimes you will and back under a park bench so I'm pretty impressed with the video I like the performance I love the quad it's a lot of fun to fly so let's go back in and talk about the specs on the bench here we go all right guys welcome back from the flight test what do you guys think about that footage I think it looks pretty good with the HQ 44 millimeter props. The other props that it came with were the 1636 40 millimeter gem fan props. And while those are pretty durable, more durable than these, and I have an example of a broken HQ prop on here, these prove to be the smoother prop for less jello in your video. So if you're looking for ultra smooth video, fly these. They're a little more efficient than these. These are the quad blade props, but I also have some of the tri blades that I tested out as well. And they have a 1.5 millimeter shaft on them. Make sure that you buy the ones from HQ and from GemFam that have 1.5 millimeter shaft. Otherwise, there's a version that looks just like this with the same number, 1636, 40 millimeter, but it's a one millimeter shaft. So look out for that. If you get the quad blade props, you can also experiment by cutting them down to just a dual blade prop like two blades like this which I also did experiment with but it didn't seem to have quite as much lift as I wanted a little bit underpowered but you know what the secret sauce of this quad is and I've talked about this before on the channel maybe iFlight was listening 1102s on the Mobula 7 left me feeling like I was wanting more power and I suggested that maybe a 1103 or 1104 might be better fit for this particular frame if you have it and can upgrade it that might give you a little more power um, and a little better feeling in the quad but they are built to be cruisers they're built to film cinema HD style footage they're not really what I classify as a freestyle type of 2 to 3s whoop now this one is the 2 to 3s version it's around $169 uh, it does have five star reviews out there already and a lot of people really like it it is also a hybrid style frame with plastic prop guards on the outside and a metal standoffs here and top and bottom plate and this bottom plate is actually around one millimeter so very thin for what I'm typically used to we we'll just go ahead and put the gauge on there and I will show you that it actually is right at about one millimeter. So it is a very thin plate. Normally I would make it thicker, uh, but what they did was they shaved off a lot of weight. And with the way they have this set up, the prop guards are gonna break first before your top or bottom plate does. Uh, the good news is that this came back in one piece. None of the struts in the prop guards broke during my testing, which is amazing. And this custom Turtle, Cadex Turtle V2 cover works really well. Plenty of venting through here to keep it nice and cool. You can also take it off. What I would recommend doing is drilling a hole in the bottom so you can get to the button because mine, I had to take it off because the button 
it would not start recording unless I click the button. So uh, I, it says that it's defaulted to start recording and stop recording when you unplug the battery and save the file, but mine was not doing that. So uh, my recommendation is gonna be to chop a hole in there for the button. But once you press the button, it'll start and you'll see it on your OSD screen, which is super nice. But I like the overall look. I, t I like the top mount design that they have here. You can also fly if, on the bottom if you wanted to put an extra long strap on there or put something through here on each side. You could do that. But I think the best place for the battery is on top for smooth video. They also have a lot of TPU on here, which is great. TPU side mounts for the camera. This is offering actually pretty good dampening, even though it's almost resting on that prop guard on both sides. Um, you can raise it up just a little bit, but it starts to hit this top plate. You don't really want the camera. You can see it just about a millimeter of difference there between the camera and the top plate. Don't have it touch that top plate because I think it brings more vibration to the camera. You want to isolate the camera as much as possible. Now with this version, it does appear to have the uh, actual ND filter lens on the front of this one. So my video might actually look really good compared to the original one without the ND filter. You can see this one looks different. See how this one has a darker lens, this one doesn't. This one's wide open over here, so you're gonna get uh, a little less performance in the sun. I did see some lens flare happening with this. I saw some kind of red uh, halo running around in front of the video, which is gonna be fairly normal for shooting directly toward the sun, but it does a lot better now that it has the ND filter on there. So let's go ahead and turn on the scale, and I'm gonna set the quad on there. Just gonna put it on there upside down so it doesn't have any touching parts here, and we'll weigh it. We're at right about 69.9 or 70 grams. I'd go ahead and call it 70 grams. The 2S 500 milliamp battery was getting me um, somewhere around four minutes to four and a half minutes flight time if I was using some throttle. If I backed off the throttle and just really, really cru like cruised, I could get close to five minutes out of this battery, which is amazing. But you're gonna be also pushing it pretty hard to get that. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just put it on here for you and weigh it with the 2S500. We'll put it upside down again so no parts are touching. Put those 3S batteries to the side. And the 2S500 weighs in at I want to make absolutely sure it's not touching the bench. Okay, 100.8 grams. I'll just turn it so you can see it. 100.8 grams. That's really, really light. And this is a nice battery if you just want to cruise. And like I said before, this is not a, three, a, a freestyle quad. It's more of a cruiser. And that's really what it's made for. And then we're going to talk about camera angle and all that in just a second. So it's the 3S350. I was getting around four minutes flight time with that. That is actually amazing for a Whoop. Uh, a couple years ago, two, three years ago, when Whoops first came in, uh, in Dutrix FPV, I was only getting like a minute flight time out of a 1S 200 milliamp battery, or 180. So we've come a long ways that now that we're getting sort of uh, micro brushless, brushless motors, and four to five minute flight time is awesome. 106.9 grams for the 3S350 milliamp. Uh, also, go ahead and buy yourself a bunch of these 2S500 milliamps. They're really useful for a lot of micro brushless out there with the XT30s on them. So that's the 3S350, and now we'll move up to the longest flight time of any battery tested this week. I'm getting five and a half minutes with this 3S450. It's a little wider than this style battery, uh, but it does fit just barely. You might want to get a longer strap here. Let's go ahead and put that on there. And well under 250 grams again. 112 grams on the dot. That is freaking awesome. Really, really, really nice. This is the best punch out. The best flight time. And if you really want to get that great cinematic footage. Uh, absolutely. Lower your camera angle down to about... 15% and this is so much fun because it changes everything about this quad It slows it way down and it lets you fly it in smaller spaces if you're gonna fly it in your house I would absolutely recommend bringing it down like this and Just cruising you're gonna get great footage 
It's going to slow the quad way down. I mean, you'll be able to fly around your your uh, TV chair there and back around your lamps and things like that. It is super, super precise. I had a lot of fun when I kind of dialed myself back a little bit for this flight experience. What I did was started out just like my traditional flights with brushless motors. I get them, I go crazy. I want to see how much punch they have. Everybody wants to know what the punch out is and uh, how powerful the motors are. But that's not really what this quad's all about. I wouldn't classify it as a freestyle quad. Um, once I backed off that idea and I lowered the camera angle, that's when I really actually started to enjoy what this quad is all about. And it just became a whole different experience for me that I really, really, I couldn't charge up enough batteries. I have a whole bag full of batteries, but I really, really enjoyed flying it that style. And I think the design is actually um, probably one of the coolest ones that I've seen iFly do so far. Now that we know the weights, you know what the batteries are uh, as far as the flight times go. Durability. This thing came back in one piece, which is great. But, hear that? That felt like cheap plastic to me. When I first held this in my hands, I thought, well, first thing it's going to break are the arms on the prop guards. I'm going to break those, and they will be destroyed. But they had put two extra prop guards in the box for me, which is cool. Looks like there's three screws that go through here. There are M2 bolts all over the frame here. And a few smaller screws that go. There's four here that hold this bottom plate on. This was a little bit awkward to get the micro SD card in and out. I feel like the Mobula 7 was easier because it's on the side. Somewhere on the side there. Yeah, there was a little slot there in the very back right here. So... The problem with this was is that there's a little space here and it just makes it kind of difficult to get that in. And this is just a little bit hard to move, especially when you're trying to put your SD card in there. You do get two types of props in the box. You get those Gemfan 1636 40 millimeter props, the tri props, not the quads. Here are the tries. And if you get the quads, you can cut them down to dual blade you get four packs of screws which is really cool you get some extra stickers and you also get some logo stickers as well which is cool this is their new logo from late 2018 i really like that a lot better and these are stickers so if they start to come off they give you plenty of extras you can see they use the the four here and on board not only do we have the Turtle V2 on here with the ND filter and the Cat X camera, the, D the 1080p 60 frames per second, we have a Matek F4 16 by 16 millimeter square flight controller on here. Matek F4 11. That's going to be the firmware that you need to flat reflash on this if you update this. There's your Betaflight USB port right there. And we're also running an iFlight branded. Sussex uh, brand, 200 milliwatt, smart audio with the dipole coming out the back. And there's a UFL connector just underneath here. You can put a little dab of hot glue on that to hold that on. But the direction of this, and it actually goes two to three football fields out on 25 milliwatts. So the performance on 25 milliwatt for this VTX back to my goggles with my Fox here, um, 8 dB patch antenna was doing excellent so uh, great combination there I like the fact that they have TPU mounts in the back here it's just holding my XM plus receiver in, in its spot right there with the antennas coming out the back I put two drops of CA there to hold it on the XT30 back here also has a zip tie there if you get this quad make sure you put a black zip tie or whatever color zip tie you want on the back to hold that because if it pulls off the ESCs on the bottom, you will break it. Uh, the tabs will break off your ESCs. It is also running D-Shot 600 on here as well. BL Heli D-Shot 600, 12 amp ESCs. So these motors are rated 2 to 3S as well. Same thing with the ESCs. This is the motor right here. I'll just show you that a little bit closer up. If I can get this baby to focus. They are iFlight branded. And they're 1103 open bottom motor design. 
which is really great. 1.5 millimeter shafts. You can see two to three S. They also have a four S version available, guys. It has a spot for four bolts on the bottom, but your quad only has actually three on each motor. But you want to go over this entire quad with a two millimeter driver, uh, a M2 driver, excuse me, M2 driver. Make sure all of your bolts, especially on your motors, you can put a little tiny drop of Loctite on there as well. And these are also push props. But these motors also have the option to use bolts. If you want to get some hardware for these, you can also do that. But these will also just push on. And they actually do stay on. They don't fly off like the Mobula 7 props uh, did from time to time. So this one had, this type of prop just flies off after the shaft gets bored out a little bit, starts to get loose and flies off. So um, with this quad, I didn't have that problem. Just the only difference is that these are less durable, less gel on the video, more durable. So take your pick, depending on what you want to do. If you're trying to freestyle, I'd run these. They'll give you a little more power and pop, uh, less battery performance. More battery performance, less jello. So with all of this said and all of the specs that they included on this quad, I was very excited on paper about the Cinebi when it came out. Not only does it look really cool with the sort of uh, squashed X dead cat style frame you don't see any props in the hd view which is a very genius design um, some of them have whoop props in the frame and other hd quads that i've flown recently have had some props in the frame like the r349 hd from diatone did have some of those clear props in the just just the very bottom of the frame but this one doesn't so uh, i think this one is a safe buy i'm going to rate this one five out of five um, because I kept looking for things that I didn't like about it. And I think they have a good enough tune on here with these props that this might be some of the best looking HD footage on the Turtle V2 that we've seen so far. Um, so, yeah. I, I have to say that this one ranks really high on my channel. And uh, you can pick this one up from a variety of different receivers. You can get it without the receiver. You can get it with the FR Sky Mini XM Plus. That's like an extra $16 uh, on top of the $169, I believe. The, you can also get it with a long-range receiver for your R9M modules. If you're running long-range, if you want to get way out there, you can get the RXSR receiver. You can also get FlySky. That's the FS-ABS version 2. And you can get Fast for, for Taba. It's an S-Bus micro receiver. And you Spectrum guys are not left out as, as well, so... It does have a three volt tab for Spectrum receivers, which is great. Uh, so yeah, guys, five stars for the Cinewoop, uh, the Cine B, another Cinewoop on the channel. These things are growing and it seems to be still whoop season. I think whoop season might actually go all year this year. But yes, guys, please do click the link down below if you would like to become a patron on the channel and uh, get entered into those monthly drawings because dudes, we're giving away a Mobile 7 HD soon. And in the month of April, we're giving away this bad boy. Coming to you from the Drone Camps channel. Guys, I hope you uh, enjoy my videos and you enjoy the reviews. And make some commentary down below if you have flown one of these. And uh, just let me know whether you like it or not in the comments below. I really appreciate your comments. I always do read them. And I appreciate them as always. Uh, I will go ahead and end this video for the guys that want to see some beta flight set up on this. If you just bought this, this video is great because not only does it give you my opinion and overall look at what you just bought, I'm also going to help you set it up. So let's go ahead and hop into beta flight, guys. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into beta flight, but I wanted to show you the actual buy online page for the Cine B 75 HD 2 to 3 S Whoop. Turtle V2 on there, $169, all your different receiver options, and it's available in black and white as well. So um, two different styles, and I believe they're going to come out with some different canopies as well coming up for the Cine V. So really, really cool. But let's go ahead and jump into Betaflight now, and let's get started with that. I'm going to plug in my USB cable. Make sure you're using a data cable as always. It's not a data cable. You won't be able to connect. You shouldn't have to plug in the battery to connect with this quad. That Sussex or however you pronounce that flight controller just loads right up. 
and we have 3.5 on here. That's the firmware. It is the MK41 target. We're in the setup right now. If you're brand new to using Betaflight, take your quad, hold it rear facing you just like this, and go over here and hit reset Z axis. I'm gonna walk you through this entire setup process, okay? So first you wanna check all your quads orientations, right is right and left is left, forward and backwards, just like that. After all that looks good, we can go ahead and move down to the ports tab. And here is where you're gonna see which UART that your receiver's on. They have it set up to UART2 right here. You can see Serial RX. And for an XM Plus, if you're binding that up to your radio, I'm going to show you how to set that up in the configuration as well. It should look like this. All of this will say disabled down on this row. One row up to UART1 has IRC Tramp over here. That is for your smart audio to be active. If that's not selected, then you're not going to be able to use your stick commands to get into change your power bands and channel. Okay, so we're going to configuration now, and it's set up in props out configuration. So meaning that the back right goes to the left, front left goes to the left, front right goes to the right, and left rear goes to the right. Very confusing, right? But you have a little bit of a schematic right here. The benefit of this is that it's supposed to be a little more efficient and less jello in your HD video. And what's also interesting in the ESC motor features, we do have DJOT 600. We have nine for the motor idle, idle value, which is extremely high. Normally the default is 4.5 here, but I left it at nine the way that iFlight had it set up. Board and sensor alignment, it's not on a 45 degree angle like a lot of these other quads out there, but they do have the all switched to a 90 so that they could get the USB port on the side. Might be the way that this uh, flight controller is set up. That's totally fine. You don't have to worry about that. You can leave that the same. System configuration, they had barometer on, but I turned that off right there. Just make sure you turn that off on yours. Arming is set to 180. That's so that when you crash your quad like this, you could still rearm and try to take it out of a tree. That's gonna be really nice for you right there. Just make sure that is selected. Personalization, this will be your craft name inside your OSD. You can put it anywhere on the screen in the OSD and I'll show you that coming up. Camera angle, we're gonna leave that at zero. Receiver options, if you're trying to get your XM Plus to show up in your channel maps inside your receiver tab here, and we're gonna we're gonna to go to that, I'm gonna show you that in a second. Make sure you have it set to serial based receiver, S bus here, S bus on the next one down for serial receiver provider right here. And down here, no 3D, no GPS. We want telemetry on, OSD, anti-gravity, dynamic filter. Down here, RX lost for D-Shot Beeper. You can update these ESCs because my D-Shot Beeper was not working. If you update that, it will work. Now go ahead and save and reboot. You're gonna come back into your quad. And there is no beeper on this quad, by the way. Now to power and battery. And I always back these down to 2.9 for the minimum, 4.4 for the max, and for the warning cell voltage, 2.9. Because if it's up to around 3.5, it's just going to start warning you every time you do a throttle bump. Guard time set to 2 on your, your uh, failsafe page and always set to drop, guys. If you lose signal, you want it to drop to the ground. You don't want it to have a flyaway. Land can sometimes be an issue. So don't select that. Now save and reboot down at the bottom. You're good on the failsafe page. Let's go back to PID tuning. We're going to go down to the PIDs. Proportional, integral, and derivative here. You can pause this video and copy my PIDs to your iFlight Cinebi. And the rates, pretty much stock right there. 7, 0, all the way down on each axis. We only have one thing turned on in the PID controller settings, I turn rotation. You can leave all that the same. And at this point, if you want to turn on your radio, We'll see if the receiver Welcome responds. This is your simulator for showing you your rates. Now we're just gonna scroll back out a little bit here. Just gonna zoom back out. Switch warning. All right, switch warning. Okay, you wanna make sure your switches are facing away from you when you start up your radio, or it'll bark at you like that. So um, it's not showing me my rates here. Now if you plug in a battery, that will change. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in a battery. All right. Now we're gonna check out our roll rate. Just gonna to go to the right with my right stick. Look at that. To the left, forward, backwards, and my yaw. 
So that looks okay. You know, we're, we're doing cinema stuff here. We're not doing freestyle so much with this quad. If you're doing freestyle, you can up these super rates to like 8.0 if you like, if you want to get crazy. You want to flip on a really tight roll axis. Now that we're plugged in, we're in the receiver tab here. We can check all the axes on our radio and our channel maps. At this point, you should see things moving around in here when you move the sticks. Set your channel map to AETR here. That's the typical FR Sky setup. If you don't see that here, it says default and everything is wrong here, go ahead and go to this tab right here, change it to FR Sky, and then hit save down here at the bottom. We don't have RSSI set up right now, so it is disabled. We're gonna check the roll stick. That's the right stick on your radio. Press to the left and it should go like this, the very top bar here, left and right, and back to center around 1500. Doesn't matter if it's exactly on point or not. You can adjust that in the endpoints in your radio. If you'd like to look that up, that's another YouTube video. Uh, pitch forward like this, pitch back like that. Now we're gonna check the yaw left. That's your left stick. Left and right should look like that. Throttle up, throttle down. Now we're going to check out the arm switch, and mine is actually set on this X7 to the AUX3. So when you're trying to set up your modes on the next tab down, you can refer back to the receiver tab to figure out which switches are active on what auxiliary channel. Because when you go to set up your modes, you're going to want to have those on the correct one. So we're going to go down to save there. Go ahead and hit save for your receiver tab. Now go down to modes. And I'm just gonna delete angle here. First we have arm up at the top, and I'll just delete that too, and I'll show you how to add a range, and then see that pops up. Now I'll take this slider bar and move it over to the right, scooch that in like that, and we're gonna put that on aux three, because remember when I moved my larger switch on the very back right here, it's close to my left index finger, kind of naturally there, um, in case I have to disarm or, or arm or whatever it's close to my index finger. So now we can move it, and we see that the gold bar moves inside this gold bar status. Okay, and then out outside of that status means that it's inactive, it's unarmed. Now it should be armed. And you wanna play around with this with your props off, by the way. You don't wanna fly up and hit your kids or your wife or something. Okay, we're gonna set the first angle mode. I believe that was auxiliary one. Maybe it was, actually that might've been auxiliary two, okay? But again, I can go back and check it. So my first mode, if you set the switches all the way away from you, that will be switch position one. So you wanna add your modes on a three position switch most of the time. So I'm gonna hit save again. You see how it goes active? Before, if you set this up and you don't see it active like that, it might be either on the wrong switch or you didn't hit save, okay? Once you hit save, you should see some things coming on and off there. So when I flip into this, void right here that's actually acro mode so if you want to add horizon and angle by the way is your stability mode now i'm going to scooch this in just a little bit these little white tabs you can move them or you can grab it in the middle and slide this little block around but now you see that on my middle position of my and i have to change this part as well aux 2 aux 2 aux 2 because those are my modes those are my flight modes okay i'm gonna hit save again so now i'm in switch position one now I'm in switch position two, and position three will be my acro mode. And don't worry about um, adding air mode in the very beginning because we turned off motor stop in the configuration. They have that set to default to turn off, so don't worry about that. Now we're gonna go down to beeper, and I have my beeper set to this aux one. You can see it's activated once I get my beeper on there. And if I update my D-Shot ESCs, to the latest version that will start to work. They will chirp. Um, that's probably what I'll do instead of adding the extra weight of a, a beeper. A micro beeper is not that heavy, but still. So now we're going down to the OSD after you've saved all your modes. And this is fun for me, I love it. This is my favorite part of Betaflight. When I get to the OSD, I'm just gonna zoom in and show you what I have. Very basic stuff here. I have my main battery voltage, my individual cell voltage here, the name of my quad. I have the fly minutes and that's timer two right there from the time you arm switch and disarm. That's gonna be the real motor uh, use on your battery. Otherwise, timer one is just from the time you plug in the battery, and it's not quite realistic for your flight time on your, your battery, so uh, keep that in mind. Use timer two over there in the left, and I have my VTX channel there. And if you're trying to get into your smart audio on your radio, 
once you have it set up in the ports, you should be able to just do your stick configuration like this. Left stick over here to the left, right stick up, and that should put you into the menus. And you can use your right stick to navigate the menus up and down, make selections, save and do all that stuff. So now we're at the point where you can add things here. If you want to add more things, you can grab things, move it around here. And we're going to leave this all set the way it is because it looked good in my goggles. Make sure that you plug in your goggles first before you go out to the field and look at your OSD because you could be missing the whole bottom half of your OSD depending on what type of goggles you have. The, the actual, the, the, the Turtle V2 is switchable between the squashed 4-3 ratio and the 16 by 9. So uh, I have mine set to the widescreen 16 by 9 because my Skyzone O2s are set to 16 by 9. Just a wider view. Okay, now we're going to go down to the CLI. And we'll type in DUMP. Dump and hit return. And that's going to give you all the values and all the settings on your quad. At this point, go ahead and save to file. And we're going to save this to the desktop. And I'll upload this to Google Documents for you guys and put the link down there below. So if you want to just grab everything you saw me do here, go ahead and copy and paste all that and drop it into your Cinebee. And you can set up your radio just like mine. Okay, so now we have that done. We're all done with the video, guys. Uh, walked you through all the setup and tested it thoroughly for you guys on different batteries, props, and uh, another tip for you guys is to fly this one on a nice sunny day with minimal wind. The more wind you have, the more vibration and jello you're going to see in your video. So um, something to keep in mind for absolutely all of these Cine Whoops. They're all susceptible to wind because, well, there's a lot of external force pushing on the prop guards on the outside, and it affects the performance of the flight controller. Uh, same thing with the Mobula 7. Both of these are up for grabs, guys. I appreciate you watching my videos, as always, on the Drone Camps channel for, uh, man, what seems like over five years now. We're, we should be having like a five-year anniversary here coming up soon. But, uh, yeah, guys, thanks again for watching. I'm Justin Davis. Take care. Happy flying, happy FPV, everybody. I'll see you on the next one.